how do we begin to see the value in things that don't seemingly have a value? I think it's an approach that I've created for myself, a pathway to go to historic sites, gather the very different organic materials that you'll find, and it speaks to the African-American experience. I use cast-off materials to tell the story of a cast-off people. So there's Ancestral Lights, and then the Africa Town series. And being in Mobile, it all kind of came together and made sense for me to want to honor the residents of Africa Town. The relationship of African American history, culture, the history of enslavement, the history, this is such a rare place for people who have those questions because this is actually a site where um, slave ships landed and docked and disembarked folks. The Clotilda was one of numerous boats. This was a, an actual slave port. I wanted to bring a consideration of their lives into a, a modern conversation. To me, the history of Sometimes the history of the actual materials that you're using could inform the process. Here in, in uh, Mobile, in Africa Town, I was finding driftwood and uh, different types of grasses and shells and things that are a reflection of this place. And then they are adorned with some forms that I created from uh, wax, uh, perhaps with bottle and shell and those were prepared inside of a mold process and then poured into, into bronze. One of the nice things about working with sculpture is that you're creating objects that can be around long past your own life existence. It, it was a way that allowed me to respond to being at sort of a highly charged historic site using those communion vessels to commune uh, with the spirit of those individuals gone by. The Ancestral Light Pinhole Series result from some of the work I'm doing up in Harpersville, Alabama at the Wallace Plantation House. So there's a, a history of enslavement there and as they're doing the renovations, certain sections of the boards were available, so I got parts of those. And so here I am running around with two pinhole cameras made of wood that enslaved people would have seen, perhaps would have engaged with, would have touched. Maybe if, they were, if those pieces of boards were from the floor, they would have walked on, I, I imagine. And then the images themselves are investigations into places where black people gather to socialize and speak and drink and laugh and cry and I would like to imagine that they the bottles the shards of bottles and glass that they, that were left behind is a connection to that moment those were placed inside of the of the camera to allow the light to be captured is sort of a lens that I was experimenting with. And I think the last piece in there is a stop motion animation, which I'm really happy about. It's called The Crab Man of Africa Town. So this was an idea that I thought would be, would not be unknown in a place like Africa Town, but I wanted to have fun with it. I wanted to make something that the children of the community could have access, a sort of a fun way to think about their legacy and their history. Uh, being so close to the water as Africa Town is, there seems like there would be a relationship with uh, food sources being uh, seafood and things, so that's where Crab Man came from. I'm kind of 
becoming more and more familiar with the possibilities of uh, stop motion animation. And it's also a process, just like the pinhole photography process, that allows anyone to enter in. If you can find a box, if you can paint a box black, you're halfway there into making pinhole photography. I'm interested in processes that can show the way for people to be creative without sometimes having a, a large amount of resources to, to work from. Coming upon a site and having a response to that site, what do you do? Can you be angry? Of course. Can you be enraged? Of course. Is there another way? I mean, or can you keep all of those feelings and express those through art?